Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is calling for an investigation after she says Social Security numbers were leaked. In a news release, Noem says nearly 2,000 Social Security numbers were compromised, including hers, members of her family, and several other public figures. Noem is pushing U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland to investigate. We're digging into this story. We're going to bring you additional details later today on Kelloland News. Another story we are working on. The South Dakota DCI is investigating an officer-involved shooting in Rapid City. It happened last night. New information from the South Dakota Attorney General's office says officers ran after a man into a residential area. Police Chief Don Hedrick says they got into a struggle and the officer tried to use a stun gun on the person, but the suspect allegedly pointed a firearm at the officer. Hedrick says the officer then fired at the person, killing them. Uh, deputies from the Pennington County Sheriff's Office came and, and relieved the police officers that were there and secured the scene so that uh, our officers could uh, be removed. And per normal protocol, uh, the Division of Criminal Investigation has been called to review this incident. Authorities have not released the name of the man who was killed. Just over a week ago, the Attorney General's office released its investigation into the last officer involved shooting in Rapid City that happened in November. Turning to weather, clouds are one of the themes we have this midday. Let's check in with our friend Brian Carsons, who has our forecast. Good afternoon, Brian. Yes, good afternoon, Dan. And as we watch those clouds, we've also had some thick moisture toward the surface, some fog issues, even some freezing mist or freezing drizzle that has been a little bit part of this conversation. Aberdeen, 24 right now at this hour. And we've been dealing with road reports. Uh, many areas of eastern South Dakota where we're still dealing Dealing with these uh, issues on the roads where it's not exactly the greatest, but I would say around Sioux Falls, it appears things have gotten a little better on some of these rural roads. They're busy treating them, and I think that that's helpful, especially with the light wind. But we're not going to get a lot of help from that sunshine, are we, in Sioux Falls? But look to the west. Wow, Rapid City, isn't that nice? 37? Yeah, we need uh, to spread that in more places in Kettleland. Well, we'll see what the weekend brings. We may try to at least scour out some of these clouds. Latest visibility map, well, Huron's down to a mile. We've had in-between spots, though, that are definitely a little lower than that. Uh, obviously, this afternoon, we'll continue to keep you updated on that as uh, we may continue the cycle of a little more repeat fog this evening and overnight. Temperature this midday, 21 in Brookings, 27 in Huron. It's nice to see the numbers rebounding here. We've come off the teens this morning. Future cast as we finish up the afternoon. We'll kind of just hold steady. A lot of these mid to upper 20s in the east, 30s in the west. That's your weather for now. And we'll get to the rest of the forecast for the weekend, all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Brian. Sunday marks the 50th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade U.S. Supreme Court decision that made abortion rights the law of the land. That ruling stood for 49 years until the Supreme Court overturned the ruling last summer. Anti-abortion activists are taken to the streets for the annual March for Life in Washington, D.C. today, the first march since Roe was overturned. Willie James Inman is outside the Supreme Court with this story. The annual March for Life is taking place for the first time since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Protesters on both sides say the fight over rights is not over. It's just simply switch from the courts to Congress and state legislatures. Marchers are adding a stop this year, walking by the U.S. Capitol, where their abortion rights debate is ongoing. The only way to restore the protections uh, of Roe is for Congress to pass a national law codifying the right to choose. But with Congress divided, the most notable fights are taking place in the states. 22 states have already enacted full or partial abortion bans, although some of those have been struck down in the courts. On the other hand, 21 states have enshrined abortion rights into law. Willie James Inman, CBS News, Washington. Vice President Kamala Harris will commemorate the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade with a speech in Florida on Sunday. A majority of lawmakers in the South Dakota Senate believe the State Department of Health should no longer decide the conditions that qualify a patient for medical marijuana use. The Senate Bill 1 came at the recommendation of the legislature's Medical Marijuana Oversight Committee. However, some lawmakers say it's not what voters intended. The Department of Health brought this bill forward because they were having trouble implementing the program that our constituents voted for. 
uh, politicians in the legislature trying to figure out what the right medical conditions are is a long step away from what the voters said they want the Department of Health to do this. The Senate went on to approve the bill in a 20 to 15 vote. SB1 now goes to the House for consideration. You can get a closer look at the bill and the debate on the Senate floor that's on our Capitol News Bureau page right now. Also on our website, Kelland's Bob Mercer is looking at a bill that would add a non-resident ATV fee. In the coming days, the Senate will dis debate whether non-residents should pay $50 for a decal that would allow them to operate their off-road vehicles on the state's public roadways. The Senate Transportation Committee approved the bill this morning. And if you're a fan of activities that don't include snow or ice, the Greater Sioux Falls Outdoor Show starts today at the WH Lion Fairgrounds. The 35th annual event will showcase a long list of vendors offering boats, campers, ATVs, and everything else outdoors. You'd be surprised how many families meet here and hunters and fishermen and just sit around and talk, have a beer, uh, and just uh, catch up waiting for spring. That spring will be here before we know it. The outdoor show is open today from 2 until 8 and continues tomorrow and Sunday inside the Expo building. Admission is $9, though kids under the age of 12 are free.